In this video, we're going to use basic demand and supply analysis to see some of the welfare effects of trade intervention. We'll start off with a simple problem. Let's assume that a particular market has the following demand equation, the following supply equation. Quantity demanded is equal to 2000 minus 20p. Quantity supplied is equal to 20p minus 400. The first thing we need to do is to establish the equilibrium price and quantity. We can do this by setting demand equal to supply because in equilibrium, demand and supply will be equal. And if we set these two equations um, equal to themselves and solve for P, we can establish that P is equal to 60. We can then plug that value of P back into either the demand or supply equation. Let's take our original demand equation, QD equals 2000 minus 20 times P. And if P is equal to 60, we find that quantity demanded will be 800. We can verify this by plugging it back into the supply equation as well. <clears throat> but what we'll find is that equilibrium price is equal to 60 and quantity equal to 800. So let's have a look at this graphically. We're looking at the market under autarky now, i in the absence of foreign trade. We've got price on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we have quantity. We've got a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve. I'm using the subscript H to refer to the fact that this is the home market. And we know that demand and supply will intersect when price equals 60 and Q is 800. The area that's below the demand curve and above the price line, i.e. this triangle here, is telling us how much value the consumers are getting from trade. This is the difference between how much they are willing to pay and how much they are actually having to pay. This is what we refer to as consumer surplus. Similarly, the triangle that's below the price line but above the supply curve, this purple triangle, is showing us how much um, profit the producers are making from the fact that they are selling at a higher price than they're willing to. This is their producer surplus. We're going to use the concept of consumer surplus and producer surplus to derive our welfare effects. Now, let's imagine that the global market price is £50. We can bring up our previous uh, uh, diagram. If the global market price is £50, let's assume that this country that we're looking at is too small to affect that. They simply have to respond to it and nothing that they do in terms of their quantity is going to be able to influence that market price. So we can represent this as a horizontal curve um, and this is going to obviously be at price equals to 50. If the price is equal to 50, we can plug this value back into our demand and supply equations. The supply curve was 20 times P minus 400, which tells us that if the price falls from 60 to 50, our domestic suppliers will only be willing to produce 600 units. If the price falls from 60 to 50, plugging 50 into our demand equation tells us that our domestic consumers will increase demand or increase quantity demanded up to 1000. How is it possible that we have more domestic demand than domestic supply? Well, the shortfall is going to be made up via imports. So we have imports equal to 400 units. One key thing to note is that now that the price has fallen and the quantity demanded has risen. We've got an increase in the consumer surplus. Um, and because quantity supplied domestically has fallen, we've got a reduction in producer surplus. So consumers are being made better off because they can buy more and it's cheaper. But domestic producers are worse off because they are having to fight, face competition from uh, cheaper imports. Now let's look at some trade intervention. Let's imagine that for whatever reason, we want to favor our domestic producers over our domestic consumers. And we want to give them some help. And so we impose a tariff of five pounds, making it more difficult for foreigners to compete. So this is our original diagram. We've got the horizontal um, global supply curve at 50. An imposition of a tariff of five pounds is gonna shift this supply curve upwards um, so that it now hits at 55. We can do what we did before and see how a price of 55 um, affects the domestic demand and supply curves. In terms of supply, domestic suppliers will now be willing to supply 700 units. Um, if the price goes from 50 to 55, there's going to be a reduction in quantity demanded from 1,000 down to 900. Again, this is just by plugging 55 into the supply equation and the demand equation from the beginning. What's the impact of this? We can see that imports have shrunk. There's more domestic supply. There's less domestic demand. 
Therefore, there's a few, there's a there's a smaller need for imports to cover the difference. Imports will fall from 400 to 200. The main results, though, are that consumer surplus is going to shrink, and we can actually use the numbers that we have on the screen here to calculate just by looking at how we calculate the area of a triangle and say that consumer surplus is going to fall by £4,750. The imposition of the tariff is designed to make the product more expensive for consumers. It's designed to help producers and sure enough we can see an increase in producer surplus now that the domestic producers are willing to supply more and their surplus will rise by £3,250. We've got imports of equal to 200 and we've got a tariff of £5 per unit. So this rectangle here that we've coloured in red is going to tell us the tax revenue that the government receives, which is plus 1000 So we've got an interesting before and after here. We can see that consumer surplus has fallen as a result of the tariff. But that's compensated for the fact that producer surplus has risen and tax revenue has risen. But crucially, we've lost £500. The imposition of the tariff has meant we've got some gainers, some losers, but there's something missing. And that missing £500 is located in these two triangles which we've coloured in blue. These two triangles are what's known as deadweight loss and they sum up to the missing 500 so not only have consumers been made worse off, but the benefits to the tax revenue in terms of producer surplus are smaller than the losses to consumers. And the difference is this deadweight loss. The main problem with taxation generally is deadweight loss. Deadweight loss are potential gains from trade that are not realized. I can think of an example here. Imagine that you value a jumper at £23, that's the maximum you're willing to pay for it. And let's assume that it costs £15 to manufacture this jumper. Now in a world without taxes, let's say the retail price is £20. This is going to mean that we have £3 of consumer surplus, the difference between your marginal value and the price. There's £5 of producer surplus, the difference between the cost of production and the price, um, and obviously tax revenue of zero. Now let's introduce a tax of 10%. Tax of 10% will raise the price by 10% to £22. In terms of consumer surplus, consumer surplus will now fall. It will fall from £3 to £1, the difference between the marginal value and the new price. Producer surplus is going to fall. We're not necessarily sure exactly what the value will be, but we certainly know it will be less than it was before. And obviously there's tax revenue of £2. Now, the reason why economists are hostile to taxes is not for this reason. This is giving us a reason why we may be um, hesitant to support taxes because it means that our consumer surplus is lower. But to some extent, it depends on what the tax revenue is being used to do. For some consumers, they may be willing to have a reduction in their consumer surplus if it means that tax revenues are being spent wisely. Obviously, that's a very big conversation to have. But the reason why economists are hostile to taxes is because taxes can generate deadweight loss. Let's imagine that the tax rate isn't 10%, but is instead 20%. A tax rate of 20% would mean that the price rises to 24. The problem here isn't that consumers have less consumer surplus. It's the fact that it's now no longer worthwhile for the consumer to buy the jumper. So consumer surplus becomes zero, producer surplus becomes zero, and tax revenue is zero. So the real problem with taxation is not so much that we have to spend more than we otherwise would do, it's because it can push products up to prices such that trades are no longer being made, i.e. introduces deadweight loss. We can look at some examples of some EU imposed tariffs. Um, this is just some um, re relatively recent figures showing that there's a tariff of 16% on bananas, 12% on school uniforms, 9.7% on cars, 9.2% on twine. It should be obvious that the reason for the imposition of these tariffs are at the, to favour domestic producers at the expense of domestic consumers and at the expense of the economy as a whole because of the deadweight loss that's introduced.
According to a University of Michigan study, global welfare gains from eliminating tariffs for non-agricultural products would amount to $632 billion. There's lots of calculations that are done to try and see how much the global economy would improve with the um, with a reduction in tariffs. Obviously, these can be quite controversial, but this is some of the findings. Uh, and then recently, the World Bank produced a report that said Uganda would earn an additional $2.5 billion from their trading partners um, <clears throat> were they to redu remove trade barriers with their neighbours. I hope you found that presentation useful. For more resources, you can take a look at my website.